All right, Psalm 93, we've got five verses here, so let's see what we can do. The Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is, has clothed and girded himself with strength. Indeed, the world is firmly established. It will not be moved. Thy throne is established from of old. Thou art from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their pounding waves. More than the sound of many waters. Than the mighty breakers of the sea. The Lord on high is mighty. Thy testimonies are fully confirmed. Holiness befits thy house, O Lord, forevermore. You know, I just, I think what we need to understand here, and the psalmist writes this, <clears throat> the Lord reigns. It doesn't matter who is elected president. And I'm grateful that people had the opportunity to vote in our country. But it doesn't matter, really, who the president is. We've been going through our study in Daniel. Over and over again in Daniel, the, the Daniel says, the Nebuchadnezzar says, Darius says, even Belshazzar recognizes this before he dies. The Lord raises up kings, the Lord brings them low. But where is the Lord? Seated on his throne, high above all of it. God is our firm foundation. Now, the person that you may have voted for may have come, got into office, and you might have high hopes, and you might have this great hope and idea that everything's going to be good from this point on. But I want to remind you of the words of Jesus. Jesus says, towards the end, things will get worse and worse. But that's okay, because the Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. Isaiah 6 starts with, in the year the king Uzziah died, I had a vision of the Lord reigning. He was in his temple when the, the train in his robe filled the temple. We, we, re we recognize that God is the great king over all of the earth. God's kingdom is established. He reigns with majesty. He's clothed with majesty. You know, God is very political. He's very concerned about politics. He's concerned that people will recognize his kingship and that they will bow their knee before him alone. Revelation tells us that every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is what? King. That's a political statement. Jesus taught, when the disciples came to Christ and they asked Jesus, teach us how to pray. In that prayer, it, it ends with thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The Lord reigns. He's clothed with majesty. He's clothed himself and girded himself with strength. God's not weak. God hasn't diminished his strength. The Lord knows exactly what's going on. And, and regardless of what happens next, because you don't know what's going to happen next. I mean, we could have a great next year. You could have a great four years. You could have an economic collapse. We could still have World War III. We, we could still have all of those other things. You could have a resurgence of the coronavirus. I don't know. I don't know what will happen next. But it doesn't matter what will happen next because the Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. The Lord clothed himself and girded himself with strength. Indeed, the world is firmly established. It will not be moved. There's a lot of people who woke up this morning. They saw the news and they said, oh, the world is in <coughs> It's My world is over. I didn't get what I wanted. Well, you know, the world is firmly established. God has set it in its place. It will not be moved because the Lord keeps it there. Now, you may wake up today or tomorrow and not get what you want. In fact, all of us go through that, right? That's part of, part of our, our, our daily struggle. We don't get what we want. Things don't happen the way we want them to in world. And as long as the Lord is reigning, this world isn't going to end now, you might not have the best day that you've ever had. You might have disappointing news. You might not get what you want. Welcome to adulthood. Welcome to life. God is reigning. And really, if the Lord's reigning and the Lord's blessing us with his presence and we're alive, isn't that enough? If it's, if it's sunshine outside, we can praise the Lord for the sunshine. If it's raining outside, we can praise the Lord for the rain. If it's cloudy, overcast, cold, hot, whatever it is, whatever season that we're in, we can praise the Lord for his sovereign control over all of it. 
Unfortunately, what we like to do is look at it and go, well, it's not doing what I want it to do. Right? You're not God. And all of us would not make a good God. <laughs> Only God has the bandwidth, so to speak, to be able to listen to everybody's prayers and to answer everybody's prayers the way he wants to and provide for every person the way he wants to. I mean, we have a hard enough time individually trying to take care of our own self. God reigns. We need the Lord to reign. Thy throne is established from of old, thou art from everlasting. Before there ever was a king in this world, before there was ever a pharaoh, before there was ever a president, before there was ever a dictator, God reigned. God reigned. He was ruling. He's still reigning and ruling. There's nothing that the Lord doesn't see. There's nothing that the Lord is not aware of. Nothing is going to happen in this world that doesn't begin with the mind of God, that he didn't write it down from, it, from ancient times, and it's not going to affect his kingdom. His kingdom will still advance. A lot of people wanted Trump to be president. He's president. To the reluctance of many other people. So what happens next? We don't know what happens next. We want, I think we should pray this way, because the Bible tells us to pray for all of those who are in leadership over us. Pray that the Lord will do whatever it takes to get a hold of the hearts of those who are in our political leadership so that they will know him. It's the same thing we should pray for all of our, our friends and neighbors. God, do whatever it takes to wake these people up to the reality that you reign so that they can know you. Man will always, political people will always promise you the world. The only thing that people forget is they can't, they cannot fulfill on that promise because it, the world is not theirs to give you. God's the one who created the world. He's the one who established it. The Lord is enough. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods lifted up their voice. The floods lifted up their pounding waves more than the sound of many waters and the mighty breakers of the sea. And it's this whole idea that even during the flood of Noah, the Lord was reigning on high. Just think about how difficult that would have been for Noah and his family. They're in the ark. It's dark. You really can't see. And all of a sudden, the wind and the waves and all of that are crashing and lightning and thunder. And the whole world's rocking. And then the boat's just, you know. It's not a pleasure cruise. Where's God? Seated on his throne. He's in control and sovereign of all, over all things. The Lord on high is mighty. Thy testimonies are fully confirmed. Holiness befits, befits thy house, O Lord, for every morning. So the, the testimonies of the Lord, and Psalm 119 goes through this whole, the testimonies of the Lord, the commandments of the Lord, the laws of the Lord. What God has laid down for the foundation of, of how this world works, the things that he's told us will happen, that's his testimonies. The things that God has done, they're fully confirmed. God's told us what's going to happen. He told us what was going to happen before it did so that we would believe him when it happened. So he told Adam and Eve when they cursed him in the Garden of Eden, one day I'm going to send a Savior who's going to save mankind from sin. Several thousand years later that happened. And the Lord has told us all along the way various other things that are going to occur. You know, there might be some internet prophet out there that, that told them that the Lord told them that Trump would be the next president. Okay, it's either one or two people, all right? So you got a 50-50 you know, you could, you could say that. Maybe maybe God did. But you know what? God knows exactly who's going to be the Antichrist. God knows exactly who's, gonna, who's going to fall asleep today and who's going to be born and all of those things. This is, you know, the testimonies of the Lord are confirmed. We don't need to listen to mankind. We need to listen to what God says. Let's follow what the Lord says here. Because who's reigning? The Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. He's the mighty God. He's the one that we need to listen to. And then he says, holiness befits thy house. Look, the problem that a lot of folks have with, the, with politics is lies and deceit and maliciousness. Unholiness, right? Unrighteousness, right? It just seems like every politician is, is steeped in some scandal. Maybe they all are. I don't know. God, God's house is holy. There's no scandal with the Lord. There's no unrighteousness with the Lord. There's no false judgment with the Lord. There's a firm foundation. You can trust exactly what God says. You cannot trust politicians. Don't put your trust in man. Put your trust in God. Because God reigns. The Lord reigns. 
Holiness befits his house, O Lord. How long is God going to reign? Forever. Forevermore. I think that we can have a better outlook on life and what's going on in our own country, politically, nationally, locally, whatever, personally in our own life, if we as individuals have God as our firm foundation. Jesus said, the wise man built his house upon a rock. The rains came, the floods came, the wind blew, and that house stood firm. But there are so many people who are like the foolish man who built this house upon the sand. Instead of building on the firm foundation of God and his sovereignty, they build on themselves, they build on the world, they build on stuff that doesn't matter. And then when difficult times come, the wind comes, the rain comes, the floods rise up, and there's no foundation on that house. And we saw what happened with floods here recently. The house is washed away. There's no foundation. The foundation of our faith is that the Lord reigns. He's righteous, he's holy, he's altogether good, and we can trust the Lord. So that's Psalm 93.